Hi everyone, Susie here from Minnesota and a garden in a zone 4B. And I'm taking you, I'm gonna break these up because there's just kind of a lot to talk about. And it's really warm today. It's, it's 86, but it feels like 94 because the humidity and dew point is so high. And uh, my phone's been overheating. So I'm starting back here in the shade because it is sun over there right now. That's the south side. But um, I might end up overlapping a little bit here. Just a lot to talk about. This is a waltzy Matilda. It is pretty. I wasn't expecting quite as red. Looks great. I have two of them. Um, we did get about three inches of rain the last three days here. So it was needed. Uh, this, this is a steak horn sumac and um, it's got really tall and I, it's what I wanted it to do. I was debating if I want to keep it or not, but the one thing I have seen is I don't know, since I showed you this last, I feel that the trunk on this has doubled in size. So maybe it'll be okay. I can't plant Japanese maples and I feel that this gives a little bit of that look kind of just arching fanning out I got my neighbor kid over here walking their dog good luck because that feels like 94 and it's, that's not the problem it's just the humidity but um there's a lot to do in my gardens so lots of weeding I work a full-time job and a part-time job if you don't know me and my channel. And it's just me who does everything. The mowing, weed whipping, mulching, weedy planting, you name it, everything. And um, when I get home at night at 6 o'clock, I just have enough time to pick my vegetables and water right now. And then I do everything else during, I don't know, some spare time. I love this pot here. Or I shouldn't say pot, pots. They're not really big. There's one begonia in each one, and I think this looks so beautiful. I will say, this has outdone itself. We've been fairly cool up until recently. And then after Saturday, we got our cool down. I think 69 degrees on Monday. And more rain. A kind of cool grass looks so good. I just, I love that. That's a very tropical feeling run around looks good and I was just look this self seated over here I'm just when it's that close to the paver getting that out might be a pain but this is a gorgeous plant or I might leave it if it's so happy I have mowing to do I just didn't mow whenever we had this heat wave because we didn't have the rain and other people's lawns were burning up and I'm like ah give myself an excuse not to mow. Ivory Halo Dogwood, I love this. It does like a lot of water, so it's what happens when it's a little drier, not 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 drought. There's no way we're in a drought, but the Ajuga looks great. This jam, I thought this was a goner and it flushed out again. I was like, I mean, it was brown. And I came out just to water this container, and then that looked good. I love my shade gardens, and right now in the shade, it feels so nice. I think I'm going to burn that today. I trimmed that up. I probably talked about that in a different tour. This fire pit here looks great. Just a little beaten down from all of the rain. A lot of stuff is beaten down from the rain. And um, I, I love my shade gardens. They're, they're just my absolute favorite gardens. This is Siberian Cypress. This is Celtic Pride. That is a proven winners. I actually, I ordered that on Amazon two, three years ago. It was beautiful. I was shocked. And this is just Siberian Cypress, I think. Microbiota. Usada, something like that. But there's two here, and that's the ground cover, and I love it. So you can see their growth is just a little different. 
but I love them. I think they look great here with the pine tree. I'm gonna be planting some other hostas back here. Can you see I'm delaying going into the sun over there. I'm really trying to get these to make it. Like I said, we've been cool, so they want this to make it for fall. That is, that's kind of a goal. I, I think, I think it'll work. This is Henry I. Clematis. This is its second flush of blooms, so I highly recommend this if you want a second flush. And then budding out there very nicely. And it's a vigorous grower. This is its first full year. I planted it last year, later in the season, and holy moly. Look at this. Fuchsia is just absolutely loaded in buds and blooms. I just love this one. I, I haven't done anything, really. Well, yes, I've, I've watered it every now and then. But not like, I haven't pinched it. I haven't fertilized it. I'm really liking that. So, I just, these are one of the Western pulp pots. And this stand here was just a bird bath stand. And I wasn't filling the bird baths this year due to the, all the mosquitoes. So, I thought, oh, this will work just to prop that up. The Sun King looks great here with the Ajuga in back. I love those two combinations. The Honeysuckle, that's thrown off so much growth. It'll have another flush of blooms. It just keeps blooming throughout the season, growing season. Annabelle flops. Oops. But you'd flop too if you were that big. On my list today is deadheading as on a hot day I kind of do not <laughs> really strenuous work that being said it's me and I tend to do one job then go to the next generous gardener climbing rose and I've I have it just twine tied in and I'm trying to get it to climb up the swing here and go across Everything. I mean, this is lots of hail damage. Memorial Day. If you're new to my channel, that is what that is. But everything else is slug and earwig damage. So it still looks good, but when you really get close up, there's a lot of damage. But there, this is where it looks beautiful. This doesn't exactly like a lot of heat and it started to do this when we did get this little bit of a heat wave here so if it starts browning like this and it's going to seed I might just be done with this and plant what I want to plant here I do have kind of a different idea for the corners but I also have an idea for uh, these can't stay here I'm a zone 4b so roses cannot stay in the containers especially a terracotta one Queen of Sweden, I really love this rose, but here, this is rain and wind damage, and I have to do this, this is the first thing. I have to get all of the deadheading done if I want them to keep blooming really nicely. That's just, that's been bugging me, but I just, and then this too, this was looking really good. This is a Cosmos, and then the strong winds and everything just, I don't like my gardens in August. I just, I never have. I've always liked May. I've loved June and June really sucked this year because of me pumping out all of the, I had 20 inches of rain in June. So my gardens were flooded and I was just busy doing that. And then the mosquitoes, right now they're really good, but others they've been horrible. 
Nosferatu daylily. I do deadhead, but these will stain if they're still gushy. So they're, they are, this isn't too bad. So. Pagoda dogwood, golden shadows, loves a lot of rain and water. And then this Ligularia back there finally perked up. We were a little dry, so it was bucking about a little bit, but I was appreciating it because the mosquitoes dwindled down to where I could actually be out here and do a little something. Turtlehead, Kiloni, this is way, way early. Usually this is the last thing to bloom before fall. Oh, I was gonna show you, isn't this, did really good here. I'm, sometimes I shock myself. This hookra, which is absolutely gorgeous, along with this persicaria. Look at the color. I mean, like I said, sometimes I impress myself with, and sometimes I don't. <laughs> yeah, this, ugh, but, the, but the bees love this. It's just, it's so hard. I have no idea. I'm knock on wood how I have not gotten stung yet because my gardens are so lush with all of the rain so much staking so much verbena bampton looks amazing here kind of hard to see is there a better view maybe and then I do have a sedum here that has not gotten taken over by the sabaria sorbifolia sem incredible hydrangea lives up to its name it is beautiful and with the heavy rains oh, just it has not flopped other than that there is some issues with and it was just my poor staking this year so it, it was really frost explosion grass just is splayed and all over so pretty, like a little cloud. And this is the Lysianthus. It is just all that way and wilting. They're, they're not used to the heat. I mean, neither am I. Been kind of spoiled, but and that was my issue this year for staking. But these grasses right here, I'm just, I'm gonna get rid of them. And this is a pixie phone and tufted hair grass, not their fault, we had just too much rain and they rotted. So, Everything that I've been loving in this garden for the past few years, I've, I hate this year. Uh, just way too much staking, way too much lush growth. I love grasses. I, that's an eyesore. The Veronica's have all gotten, I cut this to the ground and it's fleshed out. So I'm probably going to leave it because I might plant these alliums where these grasses are. And the rabbits don't bother alliums, which is really nice. I think they'll look really good there. Um, Let's see, Carl Forrester, not liking Carl this year for sure. I've had to stake grass, grass, that's crazy. Astrantia has been my favorite. I have collected seed and I've actually just been shaking it. So hopefully it, and ew, I got ew. That's mosquito heaven. And then these have, oh, they're really pretty though. The globe thistle, echinops. Wow, that is a really pretty blue or purple. But I think a couple of those have rotted. This is a tall garden phlox, gorgeous. I think it's candy store coral cream drop. It is, it's a beast. And it's probably a foot to foot and a half taller this year than it was all the other. We were in a drought the last three years. So this is, David is very tall. That is flopped him back due to Carl and Veronica. Millennium Alliums look really good here. This is why I'm like, yeah, that's that's so pretty. And it's a later bloomer too. So yes, I do have some color late in the season, but I really love my gardens in May and June. Um, that's just self-seeded. I would have cut back the delphinium all the way to the ground, but I think this was just propping everything up. So this helped pull it up. Not anymore. This, if you could, here, right over here. Pretty sure that's self-seeded from this plant, but it's not, I did not plant that one. And that's a totally different color. It's more purple than coral. So that's kind of cool. 
And that's what happens when things self-seed. Bevin's variety, hardy geranium, is, oh, we've had more than enough rain and is just not liking the heat here. For being a Bampton, I just, well, what can I say? It's just glorious. I think you can see it better over here with kind of a shadier backdrop. Uh, this hardy geranium actually recovered pretty good from the water damage. I have to trim up the Elka Millimollis. And that is, it still looks fine. That's not a high priority of this sweet pea here. I have so much deadheading, otherwise it'll go to seed. But it's covered in aphids. And this is more of like a sacrificial plant right now. I can't bring any of the blooms in because they're just covered. I'm gonna go into the shade here because um, I think my phone is overheating. Everything was wilted over here when I came home. So these are just dahlias that are in need, desperate need of deadheading. This tipped over in the storm. I staked up and it looks a right mess. Cosmos apricata. So I do have lots of color over here and the gardens still look pretty good, but there is a lot to do. I'll show you in another video. I just, I think my, I can only upload shorter videos. I think around 30 minutes. And then I think it's just this heat is going to make my battery dwindle down to nothing. Gonfrina, Audrey White. I love this one. This is a bushy. There's only one plant in here. And it just bushes out. Whereas this is Keys Carmine and it looks a bit scraggly. Pretty color. Annual Rebeccias are beautiful. I'm just not liking the heat. Oh, look at this is a dahlia. I did buy this tuber. But this is, look, look, that, this is just what happens to me growing, especially when I buy the tubers and put them in containers. It's a hit or miss. More often than not, it's a miss. They just rot on me. And it's, love this. I wanted to put this in some more sun because it's due to being August. The sun is just more to the south now. It gets less sun. But coolest thing is that little bit of a lip there it became a toad house or a frog there is a frog under there I had moved this and then I looked and, I, and he's pretty big I'm like where did he come from yeah he he fits under there so I, I'm just leaving it he can have that and this finally bounced back this was looking so horrible and yellow like this I, I gave him a little bath here and a little water source yeah these are plants that I found this was like a wish list plant this is rod jersia here I'll show you I just I took the last four plants 999 they were uh, the plant sale of the week not so the tag says hardy to a zone four to eight a lot of the information line is five i'm a 4b we'll see what happens but i thought for 9.99 a perennial may come back hey proven winners annuals this year for 9.99 so i figure for a perennial why not i can't wait they get big so don't know why i took four but i thought it's the last four i'm just gonna do it and i do have a co-worker who likes plants too yes i bought another hakana claw grass macra my dump site is closed right now due to construction so i don't know Ooh, little butterfly there i did see a tiger swallowtail the other day the first one this is a bloomering lilac and look at that it's actually has the most blooms this year i've ever seen and that's just the cool weather and the the rain. So lots of plus sides, some downsides. This is little limelight. I picked the wrong one here because it just looks really weird. That little bit of a boop. Man, but look at this one. These blooms are huge. Like I knew a difference last year. Like these were always so much bigger, but look at the so it's just gorgeous. So yes, hydrangeas love a lot of water. They just get really big blooms because of it. That's 
they got chicken manure pellets early in the season. That was it. Otherwise, no other fertilizing. This is Pinky Winky. That, I love this one. This one does not flop with rain. I love it, but that bloom is massive up here. I gave them a pretty good cut in the spring. And holy cow, I, this shrub right here is probably 10 feet tall. So it's probably put on at least four to five feet of growth. Yeah, the, the bloom ring lilac is just not as great of a flush as it is in the late spring, early summer. But you know what? This is a lot this year. So William Baffin on the left side looks amazing. It's a thug. I have to figure out how to tame this. I have been, and it just keeps growing. And it is loaded in buds again. Verbena bonariensis. Self seeds all over, and I love it. I just, that's one plant I never have to stake. I'll, but these grasses are just all splayed and flopped and I think I have an idea where I want to put some. Oh, hey, look at, I got a, there are some buds on that one. I think it's a flavor it, honey flavor it, something. It's a proven winners one. Just wanted to show you, oh, oh. if you can see that, can you see that? Well, I can in person, but just on camera. It doesn't really capture. Oh, hey, this is putting out another bud here. Uh, this is Litchfield Angel. First year bare root, and I would say it is four feet tall by three feet wide. So, more of the gonfrina. I like this. Well, you know what? In containers, it's not so bad looking either. If I say so myself. And now I'm gonna go back into, I, I love deadheading, I really do. So I can't wait, I'm gonna put my music on after this and just zone out and deadhead. Alternanthera, Purple Prince, just an annual. The rabbits do like this, but it flush back. It's usually a bit bigger. But it's just, been having a lot of rabbit issues this year. Okay, not a lot, some. It's not as much as, like this was a favorite grass and now it's, I don't know, it'll help me get my fire started for the fire pit, right? Um, oh, I lost one muffin, but that just does not look healthy. There, and just so much flooding. So I'm, I'm not surprised by this. This, why are you holding? Oh, I stake these up and I just, oh, what the heck? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's the story of my gardens this year, so. But, I mean, it is gorgeous, very awesome. This is a first to bloom. This is a proven winners, and I mean, it is just lots of water, lots of buds, so, but it's lots of flopping. So it, uh, I've never had to stake that before. Everything, like I said, Carl, Carl Forrester got staked. Uh, a lot of delphiniums got cut back to the ground. Really didn't get into a whole lot. Like I said, Echinops, I think it's Echinops, yeah. Globe Thistle, that looks really good. Let's continue. This is still looking okay. It's getting a little bit scarce here, but the bees still love it. I have Waltz and Matilda Delias here. Cucumbers are just, they're well watered, believe me, that rain was well needed. Lots of cucumbers this year. So happy with Eureka and then that one here. Let me try and get through here. And then this hydrangea, just, it was just kind of laughing me under. It looks like her skirt fell. So, there's all that, and then some at the top. Uh, wow, I think this is Nicotiana lime green. It's been a few years since I planted this, so that's how long the seeds, I love it. So it's can stay there. This delphinium I cut back in, well, when it 
got flooded and then it's so I'm not keeping it it's just it's smothering my peony there Ito peony but I mean I love the grasses but not liking them this year David flocks over here all flopped there's a gorgeous scent to tall garden flocks but yeah I'm gonna have to come here other I just I can't walk through petunias are a hot mess and then Veronica flopped on David so yeah I got Veronica flopping on David and Carl flopping on David so lovely not bad tomatoes are cool the, the taking a long time to ripen that's just the cooler weather but these are doing pretty good this is uh, black pineapple uh, I did it last year one of these they, it got so heavy with fruit that it just crushed to the ground which it did but then one of the branches rooted last year so I just left it I just hope those tomatoes don't rot I can bring them in and put them in a brown bag to get them to ripen but it's better tasting when it ripens on a vine a little bit yet So not bad some fruit not as big as last year that's because last year we never got out of the high 80s low 90s um this is a later hardy hibiscus to bloom and lots of bees hello a starry starry night hibiscus i love the color of that foliage it's just like five feet wide I'm just scooting through and this is rise and shine zucchini so it does grow up and I've been tying it to that stake, which it says it's supposed to have some sort of support and it's perfect. And then these cucumbers, all they do is produce female flowers. And what that is, if I can find one, I probably can't find one for you. Probably not in this heat, right? Well, female flowers always has the fruit attached to it. And so that being said, it's just every f flower that is produced is female. So all of those are going to be cucumbers. Where? Like right here, you can see. You got the flower right there with the fruit attached. So that's female. So if you just have the flower, which I'll show you in a different kind here. Oh, this is perfect. Right, right down in there so you're guaranteed a cucumber every time and this does not need to be pollinated right down here if you can see so like this flower right here just has a flower so that's the male flower so anything that has a fruit attached that's the female so I, a lot of you probably know that but um I did have a viewer who asked, so hopefully that explains it a little bit better. Sometimes when I reply back, what I type may not make the most sense. This is a hot mess. Cosmos. Oh, I did find some Japanese beetles the other day. I normally don't have an issue with it, but they were on my beans, four on one another. So I did put them in soapy water. I love, I will never grow beans a different way. This is a climbing bean, like green bean, French bean, and look. Easy picking, love it, and it's just, oh, just absolutely glorious. I'm just seeing if I can find some Japanese beetle. Not many, I got, I got five. So I got all four at once and then another one. Otherwise, I don't have those issues. I hope you're in view or I'm in view where my garden is. I just, I can't see the screen, it went dark. So hopefully that's not an issue. I'm gonna walk back here real quick. Yeah. Still beats winter. So I'm just, I just keep making sure I don't have sitting water. And I think I finally have compost that's ready. Whew, that was hot. Black plastic and full sun is hot. Pink Senorita Zinnia looks really good. Not too bad with pink mink clematis. 
Polish Spirit Viticella. I think this is like group three, later bloomer. Oh, avant-garde here, nice. Same thing. I don't know what happened to this one. That's okay. This, there's just not enough room here for three Sun Kings, so I'm okay with being done with that one, but just not sure what happened. Oh, look, more firewood. Ajuga looks really vibrant in the spring and just, it's still, look at that as a ground cover. Love that. Coral berry. Oh, the shade is so nice. I'm sure my phone too is appreciating it. Lots of flowers. I can't wait. A little hottie. Definitely needs a better spot than this. It didn't, I think it threw off one bloom last year and this year it's loving it. Tiny wine nine barks probably grew about, I would say three feet this year. Cause I am eye level with it. I'm five and a half feet tall, so. Oh, look at how big this has gotten. Dwarf blue arctic willow. You know what, it's funny, I was looking at this plant online and it says rabbits don't like that. Every willow I have ever planted, they have mowed down. And they do. Early spring, they did it to this one, and it put on four feet of growth. Oh, more. Four and a half. So, yes, rabbits do like willows, maybe in my area. Uh, let's see. Okay, I'm just... Every hosta that has gotten it this year from a rabbit has been variegated like white and green variegation. What is that about? Maybe not just white and green because Autumn Frost got it too. But everyone has been variegated that they've... So. Carl, nope, sorry, Korean feathery grass. It's gonna be glorious this year. So I have a, a good amount, a, lots of interest in the fall for that grass. So glad I have that there, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. One of my hardy hibiscus that I have not planted yet would look good there. I have lots of layers in this garden. I really like it. Alright, going back this way, I think... I think that's like, these are the hardy hibiscus that I planted when we got out of that rain and then we got flooded and then I put them back in their cans. Oh, I gotta walk in here again. Just really don't like the heat, do they? All right, I'm gonna end this with this right here. This is kind of a pretty sight. So hopefully you enjoyed. Bye for now.